What do tigers dream of when they take a little tiger snooze? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 21 comedy movies of each year between 2000 and 2020. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it works every time. Uh -huh. Yelling anything at a comedian is considered heckling. Heckling doesn't have to be negative. Freddy Pyle! Como se llama? No! Kelly Clarkson! For this list, we're looking at the most hilarious films released throughout the 21st century. We're leaving off superhero and animated flicks this time around, so apologies to Deadpool and Lego Batman. What's your favorite comedy movie of the past 21 years? Let us know in the comments. 2000, Best in Show. What would you like to say to Beatrice right now? I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to see that. Beatrice, can you look at us? Come on, honey. Mommy and Daddy are over here. We learned a lot about animals in 2000. While Meet the Parents taught us about milking cats, Best in Show introduced us to the competitive world of dog shows. We've all heard of stage parents, but dog owners and trainers can be just as over the top. This Christopher Guest mockumentary isn't so much about dogs as it is about human nature. We've all met somebody who treats their pet as their child. You left it at the hotel. You go back and you get her busy me! Go to the hotel and get busy me! Run! Run! Go! Mommy's getting your toy, don't you worry. So, the characters here, as bizarre as they might be, are oddly relatable. The film is carried by an all-star comedic cast comprised of guests' usual suspects improvising much of their dialogue. Arguably the funniest actor is Fred Willard, who impressively maintains a straight face while providing completely ludicrous commentary. She's just checking out the dog's uh, testicular area to make, sure, <laughs> to make sure that, uh, that everything is intact. I hate to go out on a date with Judge uh, Edie Franklin and have her judge me. That would be no fun. 2001, Zoolander. What is this? A center for ants! Zoolander was a mild box office success upon release. At the time, Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson, and Will Ferrell were just on the cusp of comedic superstardom. As their profiles continued to grow, so did the film's fan base. Nowadays, you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody who doesn't know what Blue Steel, La Tigra, or Magnum is. Derek's looks might not have much variety to them, but the film possesses too many hilarious one-liners to count. It also has one of cinema's funniest examples of product placement. Orange mocha frappuccino! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! yeah. yeah. Come, on, man. Come on! We are still waiting for Starbucks to make orange mocha frappuccino a regular menu item. If there's a science to producing stupid comedy, then Zoolander deserves a Nobel Prize. Even the film's DVD menu is brilliant. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! I'm here to welcome you to the wonderful world of DVD. Are you ready to push some buttons? And I don't mean that in a psychological, manipulative sort of way. 2002, Punch Drunk Love. This Paul Thomas Anderson film is often cited as Adam Sandler's first foray into drama. Although Sandler shows a more serious side of himself than audiences were used to, the film is just as much a romantic comedy. While Anderson and Sandler seemed like an odd pairing, both creators are known for surreal humor. To stumble across the pudding, it's just tremendous. How most people don't look. They don't look at the fine print, Lance. Oh my. Okay. Punch Drunk Love finds the middle ground between Sandler's silliness and Anderson's dark edge to produce a strange yet sincere romance. In many respects, the film isn't a huge departure for Sandler. Like Happy Gilmore, Barry Egan is a short-tempered yet sensitive soul. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> no way to come by yet. It's still very much an Adam Sandler movie, but Anderson finds layers we never realized were there. All right, I run a legitimate business here. Listen to me. What's your name, sir? Answer me! What's your name, asshole? I'm Barry Egan! 2003, School of Rock. While not Jack Black's first star vehicle, School of Rock proved he had what it took to carry a film. You wouldn't come to work hungover unless you're an alcoholic. Dude, you got a disease. Hmm. Hmm. What's your name? Freddie Jones. Hmm, Freddie Jones. Shut up! Black plays Dewey Finn, a would-be rocker who cons his way into a teaching gig that presents an unlikely opportunity. 
This high-energy role plays to Black's comedic and musical strengths. It also showcases his knack for working with children, including a young Miranda Cosgrove. I can sing. You can? Mm-hmm. All right, Summer, belt it. Memory all alone in the moonlight. Stop, Not stop. So okay, good. That's pretty good. School of Rock is also rounded out by an excellent supporting cast that includes Joan Cusack, Sarah Silverman, and screenwriter Mike White. Black received a Golden Globe nomination and an MTV Movie Award for his performance. This is my final exam. Now y'all know who I am. I might not be that perfect son, but y'all be rocking when I'm done. While it was a good year for him, 2003 was also a breakout year for Will Ferrell, with his hilarious turns in Old School and Elf. I'm in a store and I'm singing! Hey! There's no singing in the North Pole. Yes, there is! 2004, Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. It jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? Yeah, I stabbed a man in the heart. I saw that. Brick killed a guy. Anchorman set the gold standard for Will Ferrell comedies. More than a decade and a half later, this throwback to 1970s culture is still the one to beat. It stood out as the funniest film of 2004, which is saying a lot in a year that brought us cult classics like Shaun of the Dead and Napoleon Dynamite. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner! From Brian's 60% line to Ron's German translation of San Diego, everyone has a quote they constantly reference. Brian, I'm gonna be honest with you, that smells like pure gasoline. They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every time. Anchorman also provides an outlet for Farrell's physical and surreal humor. The film was not only a landmark for Farrell, but also the entire frat pack. Paul Rudd, Steve Carell, David Koechner, and behind-the-scenes talent like producer Judd Apatow all got to shine. For all of us here at News Center 4, I'm Ron Burgundy. You stay classy, San Diego. 2005, The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Sweetie Pie Hulk! Como se llama? No, Kelly Clarkson! Speaking of Apatow, the 40-year-old virgin marked his feature directorial debut, as well as Steve Carell's first film as a lead. While regarded as a comedy classic now, expectations were not through the roof at the time. The title suggested that audiences were in store for a one-joke premise poking fun at middle-aged virgins. You feel it, and it feels like a bag of sand when you're touching it. Bag of sand? People were not only surprised that the film had one laugh after another, but there was cleverness behind the humor. Now you're being condescending. See, mm -hmm. you've been warned, all right? Let's move forward amicably. Okay, well, so check I this out. Though. First of all, you're throwing too many big words at me, okay? Now, because I don't understand them, I'm going to take them as disrespect. Mm -hmm. Watch your mouth okay. and help me with the sale. Although it is a sex comedy, the film challenges the way intercourse is depicted in media. It outright rejects the idea that everybody needs to lose their virginity by a certain age. Between this film and Wedding Crashers, 2005 brought the R-rated comedy back while giving the genre some heart. 2006, Borat. I'm my name is Borat. I like you. I like sex. If you weren't familiar with Sacha Baron Cohen already, you definitely knew his name after 2006. In addition to stealing the show in Talladega Nights, he took the world by storm with Borat. Although Cohen plays a Kazakhstani journalist, America is the primary target of satire here. The social commentary shockingly blends with reality every time Borat's interviewees do not hold back from sharing their true thoughts. Anyone that is minority has the, the uh, upper hand. We have the Jews, we have anybody that's against the mainstream. At the time, most reviews focused on Cohen's shocking, fearless antics. Behind the public indecency, though, the film made commentary on problems in America that have only grown more prevalent in recent years. Cohen's outrageous performance won him a Golden Globe, while the clever screenplay was nominated for an Academy Award. 2007, Superbad. It feels like whenever a comedy becomes a runaway hit, there's always a group of naysayers that deems it overrated. Okay, your total is 96.59. But Superbad has never really faced such a backlash. It's still regarded by many as one of the funniest teen comedies ever made. So why does Superbad still hold up? Sure, it's a laugh riot, but the same can be said about other entries on this list. Perhaps it's because the film found a balance that few other teen comedies have. 
While the humor is unapologetically vulgar, the characters are more thoughtful than the ones you'd find in Porky's. Forget with me if you were sober. Look at you. Look at me. Seth, come on, you didn't blow it. I think maybe. The result is an immature comedy that borrows the best elements from 80s comedies and contemporary comedies. Also, McLovin. McLovin? What kind of a stupid name is that, Fogel? What, are you trying to be an Irish R&B singer? Oh, they, they let you pick any name you want when you get down there. And you landed on McLovin. Yeah, it was between that and Muhammad. 2008, Tropic Thunder. Did anyone read the script? This is the ambush! Was 2008 the century's best year for comedies? Let's just say that in another year, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Pineapple Express, or Step Brothers easily could have been deemed the best. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep! Since we are obliged to single out one, we're going with Tropic Thunder. As far as ensemble pieces go, few can contend with this film's lineup of hilarious heavyweights. It also features several dramatic actors who surprised us with their comedic chops. You. Hit that director in the face. Although it seems like a parody of war movies, Tropic Thunder is also a send-up of Hollywood. It's debatable whether it inspired lasting change. However, this fearless comedy did force Hollywood to reflect on whitewashing, the portrayal of people with intellectual disabilities, and other increasingly relevant issues. Sometimes satire speaks the most truth. Maybe I just knew I had to represent, because they had one good party for a black man they gave to Crocodile Dundee. 2009, The Hangover. By 2009, the R-rated comedy was officially back. Get a lot of compliments on this. Plus, it's not a man purse, it's called a satchel. Indiana Jones wears one. But The Hangover achieved levels of success that hadn't been seen since the 80s. Todd Phillips' film exceeded expectations by becoming the highest grossing R-rated comedy domestically at the time. It made a star out of Zach Galifianakis while advancing the careers of Bradley Cooper and Ed Helms. I don't think you should curse around the child. Really? I don't think you should be around a child. The Hangover's combination of a zany story with a fantastic cast was truly lightning in a bottle. Although the sequels might not have been able to recapture the magic, that doesn't take away from the original's lasting impact. Winning the Golden Globe for Best Picture, Musical, or Comedy was just the cherry on top. We just wish that Helms had gotten an Oscar nomination for Stu's Tiger Song. What do tigers dream of when they take a little tiger snooze? Do they dream of mauling zebras or Halle Berry in her Catwoman suit? 2010. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Garlic bread is my favorite food. I could honestly eat it for every meal. Or just eat it all the time without even stopping. <laughs> you get fat. No, why would I get fat? Bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? 2010 gave us a few unlikely action heroes, like the titular Other Guys. Oh my god, how do they walk away in movies without flinching when it explodes behind them? There's no way! I got bullshit on that! But there's never been a more unlikely action star than Scott Pilgrim. Edgar Wright's adaptation of Brian Lee O'Malley's graphic novels is a love letter to video games, manga, and everything nerd culture. Of all the films on this list, Scott Pilgrim may have the most ingenious visual gags. But that doesn't mean it lacks quotable one-liners or colorful characters either. The only thing keeping me and her apart is the two minutes it's gonna take to kick your ass. Can I have your, can I have your autograph, please? What's up? How's life? Every time you watch it, you find something new to appreciate, as is the case with the best comedies. The film notoriously and inexplicably bombed upon release, but a comedy this inventive was born for cult status. That's Todd! I know! Oh yeah! You know? Oh yeah! Oh no! So much so that a theatrical re-release was announced for its 10th anniversary. 2011, Bridesmaids. Directed by Paul Feig, Bridesmaids marked several milestones. It saw Kristen Wiig blossom from a quirky supporting player into a hilarious leading lady. If I was drunk, would I be able to do this? Melissa McCarthy evolved from a sitcom actress to an Oscar nominee. Wiig was also nominated for her screenplay co-written with Annie Mumolo. Not only was it the first Judd Apatow production to gain this much attention from the Academy, but it was also his studio's highest grossing film. Most notably, 
Bridesmaids was something of a turning point for female-driven comedies, specifically of the R-rated variety. You look... <laughs> Megan, are you okay? It may sound unusual, but our central female characters shattered a comedic glass ceiling after losing control of their bowels during a bridal fitting. No, Megan. No! No! Look away! <laughs> Megan, no! Look away! <laughs> For every gross-out gag, there's a heartfelt moment to go with it. 2012, 21 Jump Street. I don't like that. Put your tongue back in your mouth. Put your tongue in your mouth and close it. Sometimes comedies can catch you off guard. Be it the story of a foul-mouthed teddy bear or an upscale couple living among hippies. There are no rules here, George. Except no swatting flies. Well, that's not a rule. It's just a way of thinking about stuff. Still, who would have guessed that an adaptation of 21 Jump Street would be 2012's funniest movie? If you've never seen the original TV series, don't worry. This film ignores everything about its source material outside of the basic premise and the fact that Johnny Depp had a part. On that note, the film features one of the century's most epic cameos. God damn it! Tom Hanks, a DEA, on your knees. But Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum are the true stars here. They're not the only duo who went above the call of duty. Directing duo Phil Lord and Christopher Miller's reputation for spinning seemingly bad ideas into gold debatably started here. Infiltrate the dealers, find the supplier. What if we find the supplier first? We don't have to worry about the dealer. God damn! Infiltrate the dealers. Find the supplier. 2013. This is the end. I'm gonna swing across. I got you, buddy. And you're gonna hold my weight. All of it. Okay, come on. You can hold on to my full weight. I can do it. I don't want to die. Okay. One, two, two, three. Oh! Between 21 Jump Street and his Oscar-nominated performance in The Wolf of Wall Street, Jonah Hill starred in this comedy of biblical proportions. Hill, Seth Rogen, James Franco, and too many other familiar celebs to count also play exaggerated versions of themselves facing an apocalyptic scenario. End of the world movies typically focus on average Joes triumphing against the odds. So close, but so far. The water, it's like right underneath, it's like right there. This is the end, on the other hand, shifts the focus to entitled stars. And none of them are exactly Will Smith and I Am Legend. Like Tropic Thunder, this is a high-concept comedy that peels back the facade of Hollywood by revealing how self-centered celebs can be. Dude, this shit's supposed to last us till we get rescued! Wait a second. I know what happened. You guys dropped acid, didn't you? With nothing left to lose, we see the gang at their worst and their funniest. The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compelling me? Is that what's happening? The power of Christ <laughs> compels you! Guess what? It's not that compelling. 2014, the Grand Budapest Hotel. You could say that 2014 was the year of the auteur comedy. I go to bed with all my friends. <laughs> Jemaine Clement and Taika Waititi turned in the wickedly original mockumentary What We Do in the Shadows. We're vampires. We don't put down towels. Meanwhile, Wes Anderson delivered his Best Picture-nominated magnum opus. The Grand Budapest Hotel sees all of Anderson's trademarks taken into overdrive. However, the film never comes off as repetitive. It's an example of an artist mastering his craft, delivering his best-looking, most well-acted, and funniest feature to date. You filthy goddamn pockmark fascist assholes! Take your hands off my lobby boy! As is the case with most Anderson pictures, the humor is a blend of visual jokes, surrealism, and lines that are hysterical in or out of context. The film exists in its own world, and it's one that we never want to leave. Have you ever been questioned by the authorities? Yes, on one occasion. What, what, what? I was arrested and tortured by the rebel militia after the mm -hmm. desert uprising. Right. Well, you know the drill then. Zip it. 2015. Train wreck. Mark Wahlberg? Me? Who else looks like Mark Wahlberg? Your girl? Mark Wahlberg's like 150 pounds. I'm 250 lean. I look like Mark Wahlberg ate Mark Wahlberg. Trainwreck follows a familiar formula seen in other Judd Apatow movies. An immature party animal learns to take personal responsibility and settles down into a committed relationship. This comedy, however, is distinguished by Amy Schumer, who stars and wrote the screenplay. Trainwreck almost feels like a response to the common criticism that women in comedies are usually the supportive love interests, while the guys have all the fun. Schumer shows that ladies can be every bit as reckless, crude, and hilarious. I, I was dead sober. I had like two drinks. Three, max. 
four now that I'm tallying, but it was like, okay, I was so sober. You, so you barely drank? Because you're on antibiotics or something? No, I spent the night on purpose. I don't understand. I don't understand. Of course, the dudes also get in on the laughs, with strong supporting performances from Bill Hader, Colin Quinn, and LeBron James as LeBron James. You visit me in Miami all the time. Yeah, that's Miami, I mean. What's the difference between Miami and Cleveland? It's, it's the same. You're right, it's the same. Exactly. There's more to the film than a simple gender swap, as Schumer makes the Apatow formula her own. 2016. Pop star, never stop, never stopping. A perspective manipulator. Oh, that's a guy who's uh, slightly shorter than Connor, who he pays to stand near him at events to make him look taller. Audiences missed some of 2016's best comedies. Like, why go see the Angry Birds movie when the nice guys starred a much funnier Gosling and Crow? Ever since your little visit the other day, this little baby's gonna stay right here. Pop Star is the box office bomb that bewilders us the most, though. We guess since The Lonely Island really rose to fame on TV and online, their fans were less willing to get out of the house and go to the theater. Thanks to home media, Pop Star is starting to gain the cult following it deserves. The story is essentially every other movie about an egotistical musician who needs to learn humility. I'm doing a series on show ponies. I actually have a lot of trouble with the hooves. But within the stereotypical plot, we get an onslaught of cameos and absurd musical stylings that put Lonely Island on the map. Pop star delivers in spades. It gets me so angry on behalf of them. I feel passionate, not gay. So I pray for them and I say for them, we need to make a change, not gay. 2017, The Big Sick. For your files, Good. your X-Files, because you. that's your favorite show, huh? <laughs> Thank you so much. The truth is out there. 2017 was a breakout year for a couple of comedic talents including the fantastic Tiffany Haddish. I didn't know it was your lunch! Oh, it's a nasty oh, oh, Kumail Nanjiani hit the big time with his Oscar-nominated screenplay for The Big Sick, which he co-wrote with his real-life spouse, Emily V. Gordon. The film is loosely based on their relationship, with Nanjiani channeling himself, while the delightful Zoe Kazan fills the Emily role. So if I, if I yelled out, like, you're amazing in bed, <laughs> that'd be a heckle? Yeah. Be an accurate heckle. While their complicated love story is at the rom com's core, The Big Sick is also about balancing family, culture, and one's passion. Kumail shows us that's easier said than done. By getting to know Emily's parents, however, Kumail undergoes a personal journey that brings about growth, tears, and laughs. Not like sexy, but like cool sexy. Not like aroused sexy. I'm gonna not say sexy anymore. It may be the most mature comedy yet from director Michael Showalter and producer Judd Apatow. 2018, Game Night. Wait a second, I know you're methanol, but you can't just come in here and break the door. Look at the walls! I do not mind this game. While Crazy Rich Asians deservingly became the decade's highest grossing romantic comedy, no film released in 2018 brought more laughs than Game Night. The film starts with a promising setup centered on a mystery game that spirals into an actual crime caper. Game Night makes the most of its premise with gleefully violent action, a screenplay full of surprises, and a well-oiled ensemble. The standout is Jesse Plemons, who is known for playing comedic relief characters and mysterious creeps. His character here is a little bit of both, and giving him an adorable dog only adds to the uncomfortable hilarity. I do hope you keep me in mind for any future Game Nights. Where you bet. I've always enjoyed the camaraderie of good friends competing in games of chance and skill. Directors John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein have a hit-and-miss track record, but Game Night rolls nothing but sixes. When shall we play next? 2019, Jojo Rabbit. Hal Hitler. No, just throw it away. Don't even think about it. Hal Hitler. No, you're overthinking it. From Booksmart to Jojo Rabbit, 2019 was a year of unconventional coming-of-age stories. This is especially true for the latter film, which revolves around a Hitler youth who realizes that their Fuhrer is not the cool guy he's been imagining. The titular Jojo also grows closer to a young Jewish girl. Rilke. Oh yeah, of course, your favorite Rilke. Jewish mother. Dietrich, then. Houdini. No. In an age where some comedians are afraid to tackle controversial subjects, writer-director Taika Waititi goes all in. 
He does so with an almost naive sincerity by telling the story through a child's eyes. At the same time, YTT explores the horrors of Nazi Germany and sends a clear anti-hate message. This balance of edgy comedy, quirkiness, and drama amounted to a Best Picture nomination and a Best Adapted Screenplay win for YTT. See that American there? Just go give him a hug. Go, Ron! Let's go! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 2020, Palm Springs. When the world needed laughter more than ever in 2020, Hollywood delivered comedies like The King of Staten Island. Borat's subsequent movie film was another hilarious film that we needed for more reasons than one. However, Palm Springs was the year's most rewatchable comedy. And we're not just saying that because of the time loop premise. While we'd seen this sort of idea in other comedies, Palm Springs ranks among the funniest and most sharply edited. And that's it? That's all you got? Oh. Your dad. What are we doing? I don't know. Nah, I'm just kidding. Oh my god. It also might be the most romantic, with Andy Samberg and Kristen Milioti wonderfully complimenting one another. In a way, the sci-fi flick was a perfect representation of 2020. We kept waking up in what felt like the same day. But through love, personal growth, and humor, we made it out. Hey, what the f are you doing in our pool? I guess I come back November 10th. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.